Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marco Siqueira. I'm a senior expert on PPP at the IDB. And it's a, it's a huge honor to be here moderating this panel, which brings together some or actually not some, the most relevant and important experiences of private participation in the prison system in Latin America. Over the next 40 minutes, we will be able to hear about lessons learned and future insights from these experts. Our objective for the next 40 minutes is to have a clear idea of what lessons have been learned from the initiatives that have been implemented so far and what can be used in terms of insight for the future. Great, thank you. Before we go into the topics and we talk about what went right and what went wrong in these experiences, I'm going to ask our guests to talk about their government experiences. We have one from the government of Sao Paulo, one from the government of Minas Gerais, from Uruguay, and initiatives that the BNDS is supporting for the governments of Santa Catarina and Rio Grande do Sul. So before we go into the topic itself, I'm going to start with you, Paula. Could you describe the PPP in the Sao Paulo prison system? Where does it stand and what can you share with us? Well, I'd like to start by saying hello to my colleagues here at PPP Americas and to say thank you for the invitation to take part in this very interesting conversation. We build, provide maintenance at three prison complexes and each complex includes four units, one, three in the closed system and one in an open system. At the end, we have 10,500 places, and we have a 50,000 place deficit in Sao Paulo, so we are making a contribution of 20 percent. This will be part of a bidding process in lots. It's awaiting public consultation, but the bidding process will be in lots, and the beginning of the operation will happen in stages. As soon as the unit is ready, it will be used, will start operations while the other units are being built. Our pro project will take 30 years. Thank you, Paula. Andre Morão from the government of Minas Gerais. Can you briefly describe the Minas Gerais project, please? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for the invitation. I'm here representing the state government. You're very familiar with the project. So it's a pleasure to be able to be here to share our experience. Everyone knows this product, but just so we're on the same page. It was one of the first prison system contracts to be signed in 2019, including initially 3,400 spaces in three units to open one closed. Now we're moving to the 10th amend amendment of the, to the contract where we have three operations. The first went into operation in January, the second in September. 2013, and the last one is semi-open. It went into operation in June 2014. We're still awaiting on two units, one closed, one semi-open, and an additional number of places adding up to a total of 3,800 places. So it's quite a large project. We're still yet to deliver two units. They are for male convicted inmates. So that's the initial scope. Very interesting case. Silvina, Uruguay has a very successful project. Could you briefly describe it to us, please? 
Yes, thank you very much and good day to all. It is a great pleasure to be taking part of this. In Uruguay, we have implemented a penitentiary complex that was uh, built uh, in, based on the public-private construction. Basically, it is uh, design, financing, construction, maintenance of equipment and also all uh, services such as fitting, cleaning, um, pest control, cleaning, and what we uh, want to do from the government side is security, health, and viability of the project. Just to create or uh, give you a structure of what it is, so we have $100 million invested for 2,000 uh, inmates, and the area is 42,000 square meters with 15 uh, internal units, uh, different uh, buildings, and also residential areas, individual cells, and of course, nursery and uh, medical attention, etc. I'd like to mention that the agreement is for 27 and a half years, and a payment from the part of the EU government of Uruguay is equivalent to $20 million. The beginning of the construction was 2015. In 2018, we started off the service uh, with uh, the construction construction finalized. As a matter of fact, the idea is to uh, accomplish uh, this project. There were several difficulties, there were several resistances, but of course we can, we were able to prove that this is an adequate uh, structure for our penitentiary system. I'd like to mention that there is a very good concept, uh, internationally speaking, with this kind of tool, with this kind of project. And of course, with the time frame, the schedules were very short. There was very short period of time. It is the first experience in our country. So this is the first uh, financial structure based on bonuses. And of course, uh, we don't have uh, previous uh, examples of that. We believe that it was very successful and we have been able to uh, meet all the uh, needs um, and actually we uh, in October last year we acquired 100 percent of the stock and uh, those who are uh, owners of those um, assets uh, are taking part on the management. I would like to mention that it was very um, uh, important to mention that one of the institutions uh, in our country has transferred uh, these credibility to the system that is used in our country. This is basically the general idea of what it is. That's it. Thank you, Sylvina. Very interesting experience. We'll take a more in-depth look at it. But before we do that, Robson from the BNDS is leading an interesting initiative in uh, two other Brazilian states. Could you describe the characteristics of the project and the characteristics of the BNDS, please? Of course. First of all, I want to say hello to the other panelists. I've met Andre, Paula. We've exchanged a few messages. It's a pleasure to be here with you. BNDS has been supporting PPPs and concessions for a long time, and more recently, we've been working on the social environmental infrastructure. We've been, we are supporting two states to build two regional complexes in Santa Catarina and Rio Grande do Sul. In Santa Catarina, we're talking about four units two closed, two open, with a total of 3,000 inmates. In Rio Grande do Sul, complex with two units with 1,200 inmates. That's in Blumenau and Erechim. These projects are ongoing. They are at the same stage where just concluding the public consultation process, we're just fine-tuning it, and the IDB is taking part in this Korean project, technically and financially. The IDB brought consultants to share knowledge, and one of the main points of these two projects that are very similar 
is the concept of industrial prison. This was created in Santa Catarina for these two projects. So these two projects have interesting characteristics in terms of how the inmates work, both in terms of engineering, contracts, and that's it, briefly. Thank you, Robson. Yes, extremely important experiences for Latin America. And they go to show how PPPs have diversified 20, 30 years ago. This was almost exclusively used for transportation and economic infrastructure projects, but now it's being used by many different countries and using PPPs to build prison complexes is the most iconic example of that here in Latin America. It's very characteristic of this region. And this diversification process has brought with it challenges and with it opportunities. If we want to keep on using these models, we need to face these challenges. So I'd like to talk about these challenges. There are three fronts to these challenges. First is that structuring these projects require more sophisticated business models. And there are certain topics related to contract management that are relevant to social infrastructure and the prison system especially. And thirdly, and very relevant, is how these projects mobilize the resources that are required. So the bankability of social and prison infrastructure projects need to meet these specific requirements. So let's start with Paula. Paula, Sao Paulo's experience in these kinds of projects led Sao Paulo to take interesting decisions in terms of business model allocation and risk management. What have been these mechanisms that you've built? Which ones are the most important and can be replicated in other regions? Well, Marcos, you know how challenging it is to allocate responsibilities and risks in pro projects in general, and it's no different in prison projects. Some risks are easier to allocate. Outside surveillance of these prisons will be done by the granting authority. They will be armed. They will be law enforcement. There's no question about that. And the concessionaire will provide all support services, food, beverage, cleaning, even education, health, labor. Those have been allocated to the concessionaire. I just want to highlight the risk of the resocialization monitors, monitors who will be responsible for the sur internal surveillance. They will be part of the prison's everyday life. In Sao Paulo, that risk was allocated to the concessionaire. The concessionaire's employees will be responsible for doing that inside the prison. They will not be using weapons, and they have to interact with the inmates and the granting authority. To mitigate that risk, we worked on two fronts. The first one was using technology in favor of the prison. What does that mean? Well, technology will help us to mitigate risk and increase security in the whole complex. So in our model, all cells, all doors will be opened and closed automatically. We'll also have a CCTV. All the inmates will be moving around the complex with their biometric data, so we'll know exactly where they are at all times. In addition to body scanners, which are already used when they're searched, so that will increase security and decrease interaction between the monitors and the inmates, because at the end of the day, 
Resocialization monitors are responsible for searching the cells. If the inmate says no, we'll have to talk to the granting authority because they will have to use brute force. So the more mechanisms we can use to avoid conflict, the better for the project. And technology will also be very useful to the resocialization of in inmates. We've planned to have totems throughout the complex, and inmates will be able <coughs> to track their lawsuits. They'll be able to choose what they want to learn, make their own medical appointments, so they'll become much more independent. We started to think about this in 2019, before the pandemic, and we had already thought about video conference rooms so that inmates could interact with their families, because that's very important to resocialization. Another thing I'd like to highlight is that in the project's CAPEX, 25% has been allocated to IT. That's quite a lot. And it had a great effect on the OPEX because when you have the right kind of CAPEX, you can reduce OPEX because you need fewer staff. And we believe that over time, that will bring great gains to the project, even to the value for money. It's much better to have technology than the cost of employees, definitely. Can I ask you a question? Did you deal with the risk of overpopulation, excess population in the project. How did you deal with that? Well, uh, we're taking into account they're going to have 3,500 3, openings uh, with about 5,000 inmates in there. Well, uh, the government of São Paulo wants internal security, even though with a high level of technology, to be the responsibility of the private sector is an important structural decision, but it introduces a series of topics that are related to, to contracts monitoring. So how is the government going to guarantee that everything is going to be done according to the contract and that it will meet all of the requirements of public policies? This is very relevant because we're talking about human lives. Yes, but we're taking into account that the public monitors who will be there, they will be monitoring for compliance uh, the work of these private monitors. One of the aspects of our projects have to do with documentation. We have developed governance attachments, interface matrices to demonstrate where the competence of one ends and the other one starts. It's amazing how flexible this is as you can offer these solutions. Uh, we're going to turn over to Andre now. So this monitoring for compliance is extremely important, isn't it? Uh, the Minas Gerais uh, government has been doing it for almost one decade. And therefore, I wanted to ask you, as the person who coordinates this interface, what are the challenges and what are the lessons learned for those who want to follow your steps? This is a very interesting aspect. Over time, after the signature of the contract, the state government identified the need of having a governance team. And this was in the very early stages. And basically, we monitor the contracts. We have an independent monitor. The performance assessment system is very interesting. We have uh, talked a lot with different states, São Paulo, Santa Catarina, Rio Grande do Sul, and we're doing this to revisit this system. In response to your question first, uh, over time we had to re structure our team because we analyzed that an independent monitor alone with all of the evidences from the concession were not enough. It's important to have a multidisciplinary team. So today we have three centers, a management team which monitors the contract and the treatment of the performance indicators. 
we have a, an R&D center. The proposal is very intelligent. We receive the demands of the concession. We propose new challenges and interpretations. We also have other activities done over time. We communicate with the legal team and the state's prosecutor office. And we also have employees who are in the field. We have policemen, nurses, engineers, economists who are there on the day-to-day -day on site evaluating, making sure that the contract is being complied with. We have the independent monitor with a report. And we have also identified the need to have somebody in the field. And that's in addition to the evaluation of the public manager. We have subdirectors who work in three units, and they are responsible for the activities mentioned by Paula. These are things that cannot be delegated because of uh, the penal law requirements. We have interventions and other activities. But it would be very difficult for the public employee to do it on his or her own. So we have a, an interdisciplinary team which monitors the contract for compliance. We have different challenges. We've been sharing them. We are revisiting this performance assessment system. There are different indicators. They must be revisited. Some activities are very relevant. Others don't work. We also have a center with a performance index. And we have safety or security issues, actually, and we have to revisit everything. We have a work group that's about to start. We have the infrastructure secretariat, the concession, the independent monitor. And uh, we're also sharing our experience with other states. It's important for us to share what we're learning, but also it's important for us to learn. Today, we have more people involved, and that makes it easier for us to exchange ideas. Amazing, Andrea. If you were to give us one single recommendation of what is most important for anybody in Latin America wishing to have a project like that, what would you recommend? I talk a lot uh, with the different of representatives of the other states, and we have used our performance indicators that are being revisited. And it's very important to look at the conflict resolution rules. So today we have a view where we try to prevent things instead of having to correct them afterwards. So conflict management and indicators. Sao Paulo has a conflict resolution person as well. And yes, we do. And the opinion of the independent monitor must be strong and be based on the contract. In our case, we created a system with 10 different areas of indicators, health care, education, among others, and that may even reduce the, the amounts in 20%. We also created a bonus, a bonus based on results, indicators that are not in the hands of the concession, and they can get an additional bonus. An example would be for example, que uh, os the inmates cursos técnicos, e take technical essas courses, pessoas vão lá and then vamos those dizer people Enem. will si take a test such Enem, as our university admission national test. If they pass, they get a bonus, and that's paid on a monthly basis. So the more I hear what Chap to say, the more I see that these PPPs 
are very important. And there is also a financial impact because they determine payment for investments made. In all of these cases, the private sector has invested hundreds of millions of dollars in this, and that leads to problems of financing. These projects must be feasible. With that, I wanted to invite Silvina to participate in our discussion. The Uruguay project was funded initially and has just undergone a refunding process. Silvina, could you tell us what the experience in Uruguay was and what it teaches us about the funding criteria that must be met in these contracts? Yes, I think that... As a matter of fact, the form, the structure, and the businesses, and all the hiring uh, aspects are conditions that establish the basis uh, of the finance uh, stability of our project. Of course, there are zero several uh, very important aspects, such as uh, the indexation of payments. For example, we have uh, $96 a year, for example. That is a per, uh, per unit, that is uh, our indexed um, f uh, monetary unit that is in Uruguay. And uh, in addition to that, 14% of our uh, indexation, as a matter of fact, there is no foreign currency involved. As a matter of fact, the use of this uh, index has allowed us to establish uh, the 100% stability and pay of payments and also the development indicators. As a matter of fact, we uh, managed to create a stability in our system because of uh, being this, uh, the first project based on this model, perhaps it is the first finance structure uh, established uh, for us, it was extremely uh, challenging because during the whole uh, process to structuring and to establishing uh, the uh, scenario, we had to count on several consultancies from different aspects of our project, and we counted on uh, financial uh, advice and the feasible structure for our project's uh, structure process would be a credit from the bank system System, and uh, with the issuing of a, a, a bond uh, to start off the exploitation of uh, this sector. It was very interesting to see that there were, there were several uh, results uh, based on this consultation. And then in the end, we, dis we established the uh, a title per, uh, linked to the project. Uh, so we launched this bill, and that was uh, linked to uh, our pension funds in Uruguay. As a matter of fact, with this indexed unit, so this financial unit, it was since the very beginning of our project. And it is considered for 25 years, and the rate is a little bit above 100 points, 100 units. And uh, as a matter of fact, 1.5 uh, would be the value of our pension funds. And that was structured in 12 months. It was a very short period of uh, time considering the international experience. But of course, because of our project, we didn't have previous experience with this involvement of the private sector in the uh, prison uh, or the penitentiary system. The contract negotiation was very complex. We had to consider several different details, and of course, it was uh, one of the basic points would be to establish an anticipation of uh, income, and also with regards to the agreements, we also 
we considered the future results of this concession. That is also established in one of our uh, acts. It was necessary to adequate the, the combination of a legal modification so that the pension funds could be part of this investment as well. So we issued uh, bonds according to the development of the project, such as construction and how things were establishing. So basically, what uh, I want to say is that it was very different from what we had planned initially, and it was very successful nevertheless. So it is a very robust project and, of course, complex. Uh, of course, I cannot uh, forget to say that. And it is a very important to consider uh, that part of uh, this uh, result is because of our involvement with the construction. This is basically all our the management aspect. Silvina, uh, just a follow-up. First of all, um case the work you've done in Uruguay is a case for the region and the world, feito. actually. Uh, I am a total fan of your project. It enabled the project to be funded as project Uruguay. finance by Mas the capital market. Something important for the Brazilians here, especially. Projects like these in Brazil require some type of guarantee, not from a private sector to the funder, but we need to have guarantee from the public service to make sure that the payments are going to be made. It's like a collateral agreement in case the government does not make payments as established in the contract. Did the European government have to do something like this, or was it done only by the capital market? Well, very interesting what you just asked. Of course, in the very beginning, when we were still structuring, there was a lot of uh, noise. Of course, there were a lot of investors who were checking uh, about the possibility of time frame, but in reality, uh, we showed not to be needed. As a matter of fact, investors trusted our government, and the only guarantee, as you mentioned, would be the agreement. Uh, of course, those funds are part of our uh, biennial um, Uh, uh, budget, and it is, of e course, é reviewed uh, every uh, two years, but, of, of course, that e was enough so that investors could, even in the beginning, início, but also during, along the development of the project, add up more investors, and Esse then, of course, uh, like the British company Vaz, and also Equipments, who uh, were uh, really 100% of uh, participating on it. And this solution was only possible because of the technical quality of the project. It would have been impossible to have a funding like that if the contract hadn't been properly designed. And this takes us back to the very beginning, the management challenges, performance, indices, as mentioned by André, and also risk allocation, funding challenges, everything takes us back to the need of having well-structured projects. Que the success cases indicate that success isso, depends on well-structured processes. With that, Robson can Uh, give us his thought. BNDS has participated in different initiatives, and Robson, I'd like you to comment with us how BNDS has worked with this restructuring, and also I wanted you to indicate how you're facing the problems that were mentioned here, especially in sharing responsibilities, performance indicators, funding criteria. How are you dealing with these issues in the projects developed in the city? of Santa Catarina. Enfim, eu acho que é, uma coisa que o banco tem, tem de bom aqui, a gente está atuando em diversos setores a ao mesmo tempo, né? The bank is working with different areas all the time so that we can work with people who have faced né, challenges in é, the past. Essas que foram We're addressing the different issues. 
We're trying passado, to learn né? e aí surgiu from a past experiences. Né? Temos um exemplo é, no Brasil We only de, have one example uh, in Brazil. Isso tem algumas repercussões, né? Por exemplo, tem poucos consultores system. do Brasil que têm essa We tem, have very tem few consultants in Brazil né? with this expertise. Uh, e aí, and then, pensando na delegação de atividades, que é um grande debate que, que eu ouvi desde o início, que é o fim, o que a gente pode delegar e o que não pode delegar. Apesar de a gente ter um modelo funcionando hoje, né, que já venceu algumas we barreiras, we have already overcome né, some obstacles, uh, questionado juridicamente, venceu tudo. É, é um exemplo, né? E aí sempre resta as dúvidas, But tanto das equipes técnicas que vão depois trocar esse contrato, né? quanto, quanto das equipes jurídicas, né? Tem né? É, algum receio de é, algumas decisões, se, se algumas decisões sejam tomadas, não sejam desfeitas né? por judiciário ou por de contas. Né? Acho que a forma de fazer isso foi de fato, nos aproximar we muito das equipes técnicas de administração profissional. Então, that, tanto no estado do Rio Grande do Sul quanto na Catarina, a gente teve todo um trabalho management. realmente de imersão por diversos dias aqui inteiros, work. entendendo a realidade deles, for many days, explicando para eles o que é, uma, é quais são os, to them né, a, a, quais os caminhos que, que, que existem e possíveis para para que a gente consiga endereçar essa questão da delegação de funções. Uh, nesse meio do caminho, a gente teve questionado também o Ministério, Ministério da we Justiça, no DPEN. É, o DPEN se posicionou sobre isso formalmente. Né? E eu acho que a gente conseguiu chegar a um modelo aqui muito parecido com o Minas Gerais, né? enfim, mas que deu um conforto em relação à delegação de funções. Uh, em relação aos indicadores de desempenho, a gente teve também uma ajuda muito grande no delegation of activities. We try to understand what Andres day to day is. We know there are bottlenecks. We're trying to understand them and we're trying to address some of the issues mentioned by André. So I'm trying to identify what the main issues were. We wanted to focus on results. Uh, o focar em resultado não é trivial, Focusing então isso envolve muita discussão, muita, simple, é, muita, é, muita gestação do que, de como controlar, de qual é o papel do, do mercado independente, qual é o papel things, do gestor público que vai ter que ter contrato, the, então, mas eu acho também que a gente já deu bastante isso, né, com o apoio do BID, acho que vale ressaltar, né, acho que IDB, o BID trouxe profissionais aí, é, com experiência fora do Brasil, que já passaram por isso e que ajudaram muito a gente a refletir sobre isso, acho que esse é o segundo ponto. So that's the second point. Uh, e, and enfim, e aí tem uma, uma terceira a dificuldade third que eu acho que ela é um pouco menos issue, relacionada à estruturação, which doesn't é, so much have to do e que tem tudo a ver com, com o sucesso desse tipo de projeto, has to do with é, que é, of projects, é como, como a gente transmite para a sociedade né, e, e, e para outras é, outros órgãos da instituição que se envolverão nesse processo. Né? Eu acho que é um pouco mais difícil falar de sistema prisional, falar de PP, de sistema prisional, de falar de educação, por exemplo, que a gente tem aqui. Porque existem alguns, algumas, é, algumas né, preconceitos, talvez, né, sobre como tratar o preso e quais os serviços que a gente deve é, disponibilizar para ele. Mas então, acho que essa é uma outra coisa que a gente tem que endereçar aqui. E agora é esse momento onde a coisa começa a pegar fogo, né, porque a gente está em consulta pública. E agora, é, is when issues arise because we're going through a public consultation. So we, we need to try to contact stakeholders before the public consultation. The judiciary, the public prosecutor's office. So we are in contact with many of these stakeholders to explain the project so that they can really judge the project on its merits rather than on any prejudice. It has less to do with the model and more to do with convincing society that this is possible. About Banking and bankability warranties. Talvez seja o tema mais difícil, assim, tecnicamente hoje falando, quando temos discussão. Technically speaking, in terms of structuring, that's harder. Enfim, não é um trivial conseguir uma garantia pública de qualidade, né? Que de fato endereçar as preocupações do setor privado quanto ao pagamento do seu futuro. É, mas eu acho que a gente, para o caso em questão, a gente conseguiu encontrar um fluxo de dinheiro que fosse suficiente para fazer isso. Então, para o caso em questão, a gente conseguiu encontrar um fluxo de dinheiro que fosse suficiente para fazer isso. Então, para o caso em questão, a gente conseguiu encontrar um fluxo de dinheiro que fosse suficiente para fazer isso. Então, para o caso em questão, a gente conseguiu encontrar um fluxo de dinheiro que fosse suficiente para fazer isso. Então, para o caso em questão
that comes from the federal government to the state government. There's a problem because it's not perpetual. It ends in 2037, so we had to be creative. We had to talk to different stakeholders to find other incentives so that the public sector would replace the so there has to be an incentive in the contract for that to be done. So in summary, we try to address well-known issues through talks, by listening to experts who know the topic or who are already operating a PPP. Like Andre, we've <laughs> talked to Andre three or four times, you know, by ourselves, with the state, and with the experience that the bank has in other sectors. Sometimes we can use that in different areas and avoid future problems. So we need to think about how we're going to create those incentives to avoid future problems. Uh, so we have a hub of projects, institutions, that would allow us to create an environment that will allow us to have more experience, to have an in-depth look, look at the topic, to make sure that we're not implementing experiences that didn't work in other places. Uma coisa que você, que você mencionou e que eu acho super you importante really important. é, é o esforço que vocês fizeram de interação Your com o dono da política pública. Quer dizer, o BNDES não é quem implementa a política pública prisional no Brasil. Você tem o BNDES que implementa as políticas públicas para prisões em Brasil. Você achou que essa interação foi importante para o sucesso dos projetos? Você acha que essa interação foi importante para o sucesso dos projetos? Sim, eles têm sido importantes, né? Para a gente conseguir chegar onde a gente chegou, eles têm um tempinho ainda para que é um sucesso, mas eu acho que é essencial. Para ajudar a chegar onde a gente chegou. Essencial. Pelo que eu falei, né? eu acho que como tem poucos projetos no Brasil, né? quem de fato entende da operação prisional, acho que a gente consegue muito, a gente tem conhecimento aqui já acumulado de engenharia, de financeiro, de jurídico, mas a operação prisional, but the actual prison operation is very specific. So that was key to allow us to build a model that would make sense, not only to the operation, but also so we could have performance indicators. That was crucial. And it's been very rich to spend time with these people. For us. This is very important to the Brazilian society. It's important to them as well. With the exception of Minas Gerais, which has had this project for a while, this is not part of their everyday life. They don't need to understand this stuff. So when we say, oh, let's do this with the PPP, it's a shock because it's not part of what they usually do. So we need to be able to convey what the PPP is all about, how they work, why it's important to look at the results rather than the means. So this interaction was key so that we could build the projects that would make sense for state treasury departments as well as secretaries. It really was key. That reminds me, Robson, do que, que significa um contrato de PPP, não é um projeto de investimento, a gente está falando de um instrumento de implementação de política pública. Portanto, se o projeto não estiver alinhado aos desenhistas da política pública, ele vai fracassar, ainda que ele seja bancável, ainda que ele seja viável, ainda que a taxa de retorno seja excelente e que a garantia funcione. Se ele não estiver alinhado com a política pública, ele não cumpre com os seus objetivos. Mas acho que todas essas experiências revelam e revelam com uma clareza para mim que é cristalina, é como que um instrumento de PPP ele tem um how PPPs have a transformative impact, the ability to generate value for money based on public funds in social services. This is new, and PPPs 
a proposing and a solution that didn't exist before. Vocês, pessoas By tão qualificadas com o sentimento de otimismo, it makes me very porque o futuro, the future, não só do Brasil e da América Latina, Brazil, dependerá de que as nossas America instituições, ou melhor, de que os nossos serviços baseados de infraestrutura ofereçam serviços de melhor qualidade, mais eficientes. E se a gente consegue transformar uma infraestrutura que por tanto tempo foi deixada de escanteio como infraestrutura e serviços prisionais e trazer a qualidade que a participação privada pode oferecer para esse tipo de infraestrutura, a gente abre o caminho para que esse mecanismo possa revolucionar a maneira como a gente presta serviços sociais para a sociedade como um todo. Portanto, melhorando vidas. Então, eu fico muito feliz de ter pessoas como vocês liderando esse esforço que vai transformar o Brasil e o resto da região nos próximos anos. Por isso, eu agradeço a presença de todos. Thank you e so seguiremos em contato. Obrigada a todos. Boa tarde. Muito obrigada. Obrigado a todos. Foi um prazer participar. Foi um prazer participar.